So uh, thank you for the invitation to, uh, to give a talk here. And also thank you for, for listening. Um, I believe in solving psychological disorders through the use of virtual and augmented reality. And tonight I want to talk to you about that. So this is my uh, team and sponsors. I am collaborating with Professor Jean-Louis van Gelder and Jamie Ferrybach, who is the junior researcher on this project. Um, Ilya Cornelis and Chris van Klaven are the, are the statistical brains. And Borg um, Amsterdam, uh, Doruk Eger and uh, Gianluca Di Vincenzo have done an amazing job in uh, creating the Xerophobia app. And Xerophobia is a spin-off of the Du University Amsterdam. It's a commercial startup with a social mission to uh, make mental health care more accessible and affordable. So I'm also part of the startup and I am not involved in the statistical analysis, so I can't mess with the data. Um, and uh, all the money that is earned with it is going to uh, be invested in the next app. So I just want to be very clear about this conflict of interest. So who has ever been a little bit afraid when you were at high altitude? Yeah, I think everybody. It's a realistic fear and it protects you from possible Danger. So this picture has been taken in Texas, in, uh, in Houston, and it's of a swimming pool with a glass bottom of about 150 meters high. So rationally, uh, you know that it is safe to stand here, but everyone who is walking or swimming in this um, glass bottom swimming pool will be scared. So how is that possible? So it's because your uh, visual uh, input is dominating all other senses of the brain and parts of the brain. So this means that you rely mostly on what you see. And this is the power of virtual and augmented reality. So although we know it is fake, it is still capable of evoking real life emotions. So uh, we've just been talking about a normal fear and now we're gonna uh, talk about a unrealistic, excessive fear. Fear that is interfering with your daily life. So for example, you can have a specific phobia for fear of heights, flying, or for spiders. So how do you develop a specific phobia? There are several possible causes. For example, genetics. If your parents um, are vulnerable to anxiety disorder, there's a genetic chance you have this as well. Uh, imitation learning is another example. So if you see a person uh, reacting anxious to a object or situation, uh, you can uh, copy this behavior. Watching a uh, scary movie. Um, this actually reveals something about my age. Uh, high stress levels. So if, you're high, uh, if your stress level is very high, you are uh, more vulnerable to an anxiety disorder or a bad experience, like a bite from an animal. These are all, all causes uh, for developing a specific phobia. So when you have a phobia, uh, you think that a certain object or situation will cause something terrible that may happen, which results in fear. So to avoid this disaster, you avoid this feared object or situation. That makes sense, right? But this avoidance just maintains the fear and even worse, it can increase your fear. 
So this is why the current treatment for phobia is cognitive behavioral therapy with exposure therapy being the important element in it. So people are exposed to the fear uh, that they, uh, uh, the object or the situation that they fear, and this helps to decrease their fear. So to avoid this disaster, no, sorry, so this is why the, uh, what is, uh, I'm going back, sorry, this is why it's going. So um, in exposure therapy, you learn that the disaster that you expect will happen is in fact not happening, right? or you can handle it. And um, despite effective evidence-based treatment existing, uh, cognitive behavioral therapy, there are still several challenges. So for example, there's a problem of accessibility. So worldwide about 1% is only able to uh, get, uh, get treatment for the specific phobia. Another one is high treatment cost. So I think in Germany as well, but in the Netherlands, um, the, the healthcare insurance is not covering treatment for specific phobia anymore. And for example, in the US, it's extremely unaffordable. But there are lengthy waiting lists. And so uh, there are not enough trained therapists to give treatment to people. And also a reluctance to seek treatment. So uh, treatment uh, means uh, taking potential time of work, uh, commuting to the therapist's office, uh, stigma might play a role. Um, it might be uh, that people feel too much anxiety to expo expose themselves in real life. So these are all, all challenges. So novel technologies um, may contribute to accessible and affordable treatment options in important ways, such as, such as virtual or augmented reality therapy. So in uh, the virtual or augmented reality exposure therapy, people are exposed to the object or the situation that they fear, but then in VR or AR instead of real life, like in normal therapy. So advantages of these digital interventions is that people rate it uh, generally more acceptable than exposure in vivo, which means exposure in real life. You also have total control over the stimuli. So for example, um, Right. Um, the snake or the mouse or the wasp is programmed what it should be, what you want it to do, instead of a real uh, snake or mouse or whatever um, that you don't have control over. And there's easy access to threatening stimuli. So it's just one push, on, on one click on the bottom and you start your uh, VR or AR level. Instead of uh, like, for example, with real flying, uh, you need to buy an air ticket, you have to go to the airport and you have to uh, take a plane. So um, this kind of therapy has been uh, researched uh, since decades now and we know it works. And uh, most of the research has focused on anxiety disorders but there's also evidence for psychotic disorders, eating disorders, depressive and substance use disorders. We even know that it's equally effective compared to traditional therapy. And um, this is a snake uh, around the neck of uh, this therapist, La Gironis, uh, and well, so you maybe understand why therapists might also be happy that they can offer PR or AR to patients instead of constantly having to expose themselves uh, to all those uh, insects and animals. So this is an example of colleagues of mine in Sweden, uh, Alexander Milov uh, with uh, PR for uh, spider phobia and uh, VR for psychosis by uh, Professor Freeman et al. And here's an example of cockroach phobia uh, using augmented reality. But these kinds of therapies also have challenges. So it's still in a therapist's office, 
so it's not so accessible and uh, there's still high treatment uh, cost because uh, and that's um, uh, because you need expensive equipment. So uh, this is why we have developed Xerophobia. And uh, this is an app that you can download on your phone. And it's based on cognitive behavioral therapy and exposure therapy in VR or AR. And what's different between Xerophobia and other uh, um, RET and RET uh, therapies is that you do not uh, require to purchase an expensive headset. Um, it's just, uh, uh, or other equipment, it's just your phone and a rudimentary set of uh, VR goggles. And that can be like five to 10 euros. So, and with augmented reality, you even don't have to uh, buy the VR goggles. So, and another important difference is that xerophobia is unguided, so there's no therapist at all. So, uh, we have developed uh, an app for field height and uh, field flying. Those are based on VR, virtual reality. And then we have an uh, app for field spiders, which is almost ready, and that is based on augmented reality. So it's unguided, but uh, let me show you the virtual therapist. Hi, I'm Tara. With this app, I'm going to help you get rid of your fear of heights. Experiencing fear is normal and generally healthy because it warns you of possible danger. But sometimes you feel intense fear when there really is no real danger. And this fear may start to interfere with your daily life. This is the type of fear xerophobia is about. So uh, it's completely animated. Uh, here you see an overview of the modules. It involves an encompassing CBT um, treatment, including psychoeducation about your phobia, um, setting goals, uh, how to conduct exposure, uh, evaluating negative thoughts, um, and then a VR or AR exposure. And this is the virtual environment that people use to conquer their fear of height. Um, so it uses gaze control. Hey, that's strange. That's not, that's, I think it's uh, because of the heavy loading with the uh, zoom that is, uh, is shocking a bit. But um, here people have to replace uh, a lamp and uh, we have gamified it a bit. Uh, so that people are more motivated to expose um, themselves to their fears. And by this, they're confronted to look down in a uh, natural way. So here they need to uh, uh, walk over this bridge uh, to uh, save a, a cat. And here, uh, several bikes uh, need to be uh, uh, collected. And as you can see, it has an Amsterdam touch to it. So uh, we have investigated the Fear of Heights app in a randomized controlled trial in which people got um, like randomly assigned to a intervention group, which is zero and a, a control group, which did nothing or who did nothing. And um, as you can see, we uh, randomized nearly 200 participants. And here you can see the results. And we found a large effect size at post-test. Uh, here you can see the treatment group and um, you can see that the symptoms dropped significantly from baseline to post-test. And results showed that uh, people derive more benefit from xerophobia when their anxiety levels are high, when uh, people um, feel more present in virtual reality and when people um, use a rated the user app as more friend, uh, user friendly. So here you see the results of those who completed the intervention, which was about 80% of the last sample. And as you can see, uh, those who completed the app derived even more benefit. 
and at follow-up the effects even got better for the, those who completed the intervention. So uh, users were happy and satisfied with xerophobia in general. Here is another happy user. Yeah, so uh, of course not everyone likes to, the concept or can derive benefit from it, uh, but that's also with medical treatment, right? Uh, using the same concept, uh, we developed the field flying uh, app. Uh, here I will demonstrate it. Ladies and gentlemen, first of all, thank you very much for your attention and for boarding so quickly. My name is Sarah, and I'm your chief flight attendant today. On behalf of the entire crew, welcome aboard. So uh, we have conducted a randomized control trial among 140 participants. We are writing up the results, can't say nothing about it yet, uh, but uh, I'm still happy. Um, our research team is happy. So um, we are finalizing the Fear of Spiders app, which is augmented reality. Here you can see the level uh, select and the spider select screen. Uh, here you can uh, select the spider, here you can select the level, and then you can uh, practice uh, with your phobia in augmented reality. Uh, you can even uh, let a tarantula uh, walk on your kitchen table. And also to have one uh, of those nasty ones uh, walking on your hand. Uh, so I a colleague of mine was so kind to um, uh, help me out with getting this footage for you guys. So she was brave enough to uh, let this nasty spider be walking on her hand. And we use uh, um, hand detection software in this program. And the exposure is uh, uh, guided by uh, messages from the virtual therapist. So these are the AR spiders made by Luke Verschleien. And uh, when you have practiced in AR, you are uh, earning a fly, which you can give to your pet spider. You can name the pet spider, you can feed it. Uh, you need to feed it, otherwise it will die after five days. And if you manage to keep it alive for seven days, you wear an upcrop like a cute hat or t-shirt. And you can play along with it and it's meant to like, motivate people to come back. 
So with this concept, uh, treatment is easily accessible, I uh, think, uh, because you only need your own phone and um, some uh, cardboard goggles. You don't need to go to a therapist, and therefore no high treatment costs, no lengthy waiting lists, and uh, we low, lower the reluctance to seek treatment uh, with all these elements. So the fear of heights and fear of flying apps are available in Dutch and English in the App Store for both iPhone and um, uh, Android. It's in a purchase, um, uh, but so as I said, the money earned is invested in the next app. We don't get rid of it. And, um, and the fear of spiders will be ready in 2022. And um, we are actually also um, developed, uh, developing a German version of the Fear of Spiders app. And so if you are German speaking, living here in the vicinity, and you are uh, having an anxiety for spiders, please email me if you want to participate in research. I need you um, to investigate whether uh, these spiders are capable of evoking the same fear reactions as in real life. So uh, to conclude, can you get rid of your phobia from your own couch? We think you can. So thank you for your attention.